welcome to another episode of Monix. I'm excited today, as usual. When I'm excited, you know, it's a guest show. And um, the topic we'll be discussing today is exes and favors. But before um, I introduce my guest to you and also delve into the question and answer session, let me give you a brief background to our topic. So a few days ago, I was watching the television and I saw three ladies discuss the case of a lady who requested for favors from her ex-boyfriend. So the lady in question is a married woman with um, two kids. Um, so because of the lockdown, COVID-19, she lost her job. Her husband also lost his job. So things became very difficult. She couldn't feed her kids. She couldn't take care of the home. You know, um, she then asked for um, favor from family and friends, but there was no one to help because everybody's on lockdown. So she talked about the fact that she could actually ask her ex-boyfriend for help. This ex-boyfriend of ours is very comfortable and is one who can actually help her in the midst of the lockdown. So she reached out to the boy ex-boyfriend, asked for favor, and that's one of light up. So now the period she requested for this favor, favor from her ex-boyfriend, she did not inform her husband. But subsequently she did, and when she did, her husband was enraged, he was mad. <laughs> so the ladies on television then um, debated the rightness or wrongness of her action. And sitting back in my house, I was just thinking like, if, was she right? Should she have done that? But actually I'm sitting on the fence because I can't actually say she's wrong or she's right. So I thought that this topic would be um, a good one to discuss on my show. And I decided to bring in a guest who I really love. She's someone who is very intelligent and beautiful. When she comes on the show right now, you're going to see what I'm talking about. I've had conversations with her and I know she's very intelligent. So without further ado, please welcome with me my beautiful and intelligent guest, Esther Alal. Esther, welcome to the show. Yes, so can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. Good to see you, Moya. Love you. Thank I'm you. so excited to be on your show today. Morning. Thank you. I'm so excited <laughs> to have you today. Okay, because Thank we are time bound, um, we should go straight to the questions we have for today. And I'm oh. very um, optimistic that um, people who find themselves in this similar situation we'll learn a thing or two from you today because, you know, we can never say never, this can happen to anybody, especially now that, uh, you know, everybody's on lockdown in Nigeria, in America, almost everywhere all over the world. So we need to learn, you know, how to handle things. Okay. Question says, um, once you are married, what type of relationship should you have or maintain with your ex-boyfriend or girlfriend? Okay, so, this is a big, I'm so big on this topic because my husband and I always talk about, you know, things like this. Number one, I would say that you need to understand your spouse's stand on this matter. Like, um, um, no two relationships, you know, has the same, no two relationships are the same. People think differently. Some people take things lightly while some others don't, you know. But if I'm going to speak generally, you know, then I'm going to say, for me, I'm going to say that, that even if I, I think there should, there should be a bridge, but that bridge should be so, 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 so distant because I don't believe it. My husband would say, burn all bridges. Like, burn it, pack the ashes and throw it into the ocean. But I would say because of um, I'm big on human relations, like, okay, have a relationship, but let there be boundary. Mm, okay, that's, excellent. That's excellent. my own stand, you know, have a relationship, but let there be boundaries. Boundaries, oh, okay, all right, okay. Um, so the next question says, um, in the course of your marriage, should you tell your spouse everything about your ex, everything you did with your ex while you were dating? Like everything, like everything, <laughs> like bear it all, <laughs> <laughs> and then that's gonna take me to um, what I call being stupidly honest. Mm. Hmm. Stupid, I need to take a note of that. Stupidly honest, 
not everything is not everything we should say like before you even generally speaking before before you say things to people generally now before, more importantly your spouse you should ask yourself some certain questions do i really have to say this like what does it matter is it going to change this person is it going to make this person any better is it necessary does this person need to know is it going to come in the way there are some things yes you should tell, talk to your spouse about your ex but some if it's never ever ever going to come in the way of your relationship if it's not some like for it for example why do you want to tell your spouse about your your exes um um, how which word Moya? I don't want to be too raw now. Like in bed. <laughs> yes. Why do you want to tell your your spouse about your ex's prowess on bed? Like you don't want to do that. Like it doesn't. Are you trying to compare? You know, it's it's not smart. Right. But if there's something that you know, probably you took an oath with your ex, <laughs> or um you had a child with your ex or you have a business with your ex that you feel you know your spouse should know about so you can deal with it together so that it won't disturb the peace of your marriage then you can or your relationship generally then you can go ahead and talk to them about it but i mean if it's if it's never going to have anything to do with them so why do you want to say it? It's Thank not, you. I can tell you from, you know, exam, um, from experience, it is not good. We should apply emotional intelligence, like mm. know when to talk and know when not to talk. Mm. Excellent. So um, I have a follow-up question on that. So in the situation or in the case that your spouse then asks you specific questions, like you really wants to know, especially ladies, you know, we ladies, we like to probe, we like to know about our husband's exes, especially what he did together. I know a friend who told me she often asks her husband about that. So <laughs> if your own husband asks you specific questions, okay. you know, an answer, even if you know that the response you give to him might not sit well with him. Are you going to give him that answer? Okay, now still talking about emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. Human being, generally, we are naturally um, cu curious. You know, human being has this, we want to know. Mm -hmm. You know, even if that thing we want to know will harm us, we want to know. So it is left to you as the partner to know your spouse's um, nature. I know if I know that words get to my husband and then if I say this thing, he, 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 he may want to know, yes, but when he knows, it's going to affect him for a while. I would not, I will find a way to say, I'm not going to say like, say, okay like i mean let's for example your husband is having issues with um man turgidity and then he's asking you so what about your ex how good and i mean it would be insensitive for you to start explaining ah my ex used to do this he used to do that he used to put and you know he doesn't do all that the truth is you're being honest yeah it's good to be honest but not you know, I won't say being, this is not being dishonest. This is applying wisdom. Mm. This is applying wisdom. This is knowing, you know, when to push and when to pull. Mm. You need to, you, you need, because this relationship of a thing, it takes a lot. Especially if you want a good one. You have to, so you have to be intentional about it. Mm. The good relationship don't just happen. You have mm. to be intentional. You need to understand your spouse and then, you know, know what works and what doesn't work for them. Thank because, you. like, ah, but you are the one that told, asked me. <laughs> yes, I asked you, but I didn't say you should open all your mouth to talk. 
Right. So yeah. even if they, they are curious, even if they ask, you know, apply wisdom, you know, mm. know when to push, know when to pull, know mm. what information to diverge, know which one to keep. Thank you. Guys, I told you she's very intelligent. Now you can see. <laughs> you can see oh, <laughs> okay, now to the um, main and the juiciest part of the conversation. So this question says, if you need an urgent favor and only your ex can grant such favor, would you ask your ex? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's be realistic. How can it be that in the entire lineage of yourself and your spouse, it's only your ex that can help if we want to be realistic? Let's be, because it's, it's always easy to say hey, he was the only one available when I needed help. But the truth is, if your ex was dead, would you die? <laughs> I'm, no, no, I, no, this is a reality more you're like it's it's not right like if this person was not good enough to be in your presence why do you want to go back to mm. your past mm. Mm. your ex is in your past the only reason why he's not he or she is not your spouse today is because they were not fit enough to be in, in your presence home. so mm. why are you going back to your past and telling me that your ex was the only one available to help it's a no-no for me I don't want to say it's right or wrong, but personally, it's a no-no. I ask the question again. In the entire lineage, in the entire lineage of your, your spouse and yourself, are you telling me there's nobody, your church, your mosque, your, your brothers, your, your siblings, your friends, then you should watch yourself if... Okay, let me, no. let, me, let me ask you, let me probe for that. So let's, let us imagine a situation where, not you now, let's just say Lady A. So Lady A has a child who is very terminally ill and okay. um, she needs to take this child into surgery, um, for surgery and um, she doesn't have anything. She's broke, her husband is broke. They can't afford to take the child to um, any hospital around, a very good hospital. And okay, somehow someone told her, I know a doctor somewhere who can take good care of your child, you know, who can help you with the surgery without even collecting a dime at this point. But this doctor collects, um, gets, can be paid after the surgery is done. Okay, on getting to the hospital, you realize that the doctor in charge is your ex and he can take care of your child do the surgery and not collect a dime. So would you say because this person is your ex, you won't accept this favor from him? Okay. Now, here's the thing. If you and your spouse are one, mm -hmm. you should be on the same page. This is a life-threatening situation. Mm -hmm. And then I need to talk to my spouse about it. If he agrees, wow, this is a life-threatening issue right mm. your, your spouse wouldn't want your child to die right and he knows the, you don't have, you can't afford it at the moment mm -hmm. and this person can save the life of a child of mm -hmm. your child mm -hmm. i mean if the spouse i would i would run it by my spouse i wouldn't just go ahead and do it and then come back to bed no remember this child is terminally ill and can die anytime any moment yeah, I mean, at that point, I should be in com Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, so I'm saying that, you know, this child needs to get to the hospital like ASAP. Like, you don't have time to consult, to sit down, to, oh, my darling husband, you know, do, let's do this, let's take him to Dr. Um, Dr. Aliu. No, you don't have time. You need to make a decision right away. How many seconds will it cost take you to put a call, even if you can't reach your husband at that point in time? Does he have a sister? Does he have a mother? Does he have a father? Does he have anybody? Just run it by somebody. That's all. Now, I'm not talking about consent now because mm -hmm. this is a life-threatening issue. Right. But what I'm just saying is don't just shoot the gun. Run it by somebody. Run it by your spouse. If he's not available, run it by his 
mom, if his mom is not available, run it by his dad. If his dad is not available, run it by anybody else or his friend. You might not even want to bring in your in-laws into this. It depends on the kind of relationship you have with them. Mm -hmm. But if the, the, you look at a friend or somebody who you know, you know, your husband listens to, mm -hmm. run it by that person if your husband is not available. It's a life-threatening issue. Your, your husband, your spouse loves his child. He wouldn't want his child to die. And he knows that that is the only way out. Yes, we can, we can do it, but run it by somebody. That's my opinion. Run it okay. by um, I Okay, I need us to be very clear on this. So if you run it by whoever it is you have chosen, and they tell you, I don't think you should go to that doctor. I don't think you should take your child there. What do you do? do you I will go ahead and do it. Okay. I will go ahead and do it because when 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 push comes to shows, when everything comes and is all ranting and everything, when people like come into the matter and they will ask, like, what did you do? I was I told him it he refused, but I don't want my child to die, so I have to go ahead and do it. It is, you know, they know you did it under duress. Hmm. Like, oh, I called him, his phone, he wasn't picking up, I couldn't reach him. Because I don't want to do it on my own. I have to call so, so, so. You know, there's a witness. Mm, right. It makes, it, it gives you a soft landing. Mm. You get what I'm saying? But if you just do it out of your, you know, like, it could, it could send so many signals. Like, oh, could it be that you guys have been saying before now? It could be, mm. you know, so many things. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I like that. Um, I think you answered the next question already, but let me just um, read it out. It says, if you ask your ex for this favor, will you tell your spouse? So you already answered that you would tell your spouse. So yes, I do. Yeah. So the next question says, if you tell your spouse and he disagrees with you, what would you do? If it's a life-threatening issue, yes. I would talk to somebody else, talk to somebody he listens to. But if it's not a life-threatening issue, I'm going to wait. Do I value this thing I want to get from my ex more than my marriage or my relationship generally? Because we're talking to, you know, a wide, wider range of people. Right. Like, I'm going to weigh which is, which is heavier and I'll go with the heavier one. Which one matters more to you? That mm -hmm. favor you want to get from your ex or your marriage, or your relationship, your peace of mind mm. okay so let me take you back to the um story i said at the beginning um the lady due to covid19 she lost her job her husband lost his job so there was no help from anyone and then she needed to feed her kids so she reached out to her ex he gave her money and then she was able to buy food stuff take care of the home and afterwards then told her husband this is where i got the money from so in your own case, do you think what she actually did was right or wrong? 100% wrong. 100% mm. wrong. I have answered that question before. Mm -hmm. I said, does it mean that in her lineage, <laughs> in her husband's lineage, I'm not talking about um, um, simply as a lineage in the whole of all the people you know. But remember that everybody is on lockdown and people are trying to manage. Your ex is also on lockdown. <laughs> no, okay, imagine if the hex were to be your teddler, Dangote. I mean, those want, if I want to be realistic, if yes. it's not a life threatening issue, mm -hmm. don't go there. Mm. My personal opinion if it's not a life threatening issue, especially, especially if it's going to hurt your relationship with your spouse, especially. Some people don't care because, you know, some people are just different. They don't care. They will even tell you, go get it. We spend together. <laughs> yes. So do what please you. There's no hard and fast rule. Do what works for you. For me, that I know that I told you initially that my husband would say, burn that bridge, pack the ash, and throw it into the ocean. Like, <laughs> you know, like you don't. You don't want to have anything to do with your ex. Mm. So That's imagine me going to say that my ex is giving me money for what for? Mm. You know, it bruises the man's ego, especially when it's, you know, 
especially when it has to do with the wife and the man. It bruises the man's ego and men and their ego. You know how it works. Mm. You, you, can you, don't say him, you don't want him to start thinking like, hey, so because I don't have money, my ex, my wife's ex is feeding me. You know the way they can yes. analyze this I issue. I totally understand. I totally understand. If you value your peace, you're going to just let go. Let your ex be in your past. If you didn't mm. make it to be the present, then mm. it should be in your present. Right. Let it be in the past. Past. Okay. Thank you. So now flipping the script. Um, will you be comfortable if your own spouse um, asks his ex for favors? To take care of the home, to take good care of you, to take care of your kids. Would you be comfortable? Whether it tells you or not, are you going to be comfortable with that? What do I want? Do I do I have a school of thought? Mm. Like I always tell him, as much as I agree with, you know, burning your bridges, packing the ash and throwing into the ocean. I I don't hundred percent believe in that school of thought. I believe in human relationships. Keep your relationship, but let there be boundaries, like boundaries. You understand what I mean? So if he does it to me, it depends on the kind of favor. But I wouldn't do it to him because he doesn't want it. You get what I mean? But, but then if you I don't want it. See, you said something earlier. If he doesn't want it, you would you won't do it. But yes. if he wants to, if you don't want it, he can do it. Is that what you No, 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 no. If I don't want it, he can do it. Okay. That makes it clear. If I don't want it, you know, I always say, like, um, according to Dale Carnegie, he always says um, um 10 golden rules of relationship, how to win friends and influence people. Like let us learn to treat people the way they would want to be treated, not the way I would want to be treated. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Like, treat people the way they want to be treated. As against the general saying, like, treat people the way you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. I might love to be treated with some nice amala, begiri, and ewedu, but creating happiness for my spouse might not be with me. Um, eating begiri and malani we do so the fact that i want to make you happy I, that's why i always ask what can i do to make you a happier person what can i do to create happiness for you he was like oh surprise me well i believe in surprises but to an extent if i really really want to create happiness for you maybe directly or indirectly i try to find out the things that you know creates happiness for you so I'm going to ask. So if I don't want it, you don't do it to me. That's the rule. But if, if I'm 80% like, okay, have a relationship, but let it be boundaries. Like in your last video I was watching, it was really interesting. You said, if, my, if you must be a friend, if my spouse must have um, an outing or a date or or uh, have to go somewhere with the opposite sex that is his friend, then I should be there. Mm -hmm. And that's my school of thought too. And he knows when it comes to that, he, he, he knows that that is, I may not be of the opinion of burning your bridges, packing the ash and throwing into the ocean. But I believe that if my, let's say for, let me give you a scenario. Okay. My, my husband wants to visit a single a friend. Would they, they're having a, like a get together or a networking stuff and she's single. Mm -hmm. I mean, I should be there. If she's not comfortable with me being there, then you don't have any business being there. You know, so let's not make an issue out of that. You know, if it's going to, I'm really going to be mad and I'm not going to hide my feelings. So don't come to give me that, that territorial and that jealous. I mean, I always tell him, it's what you value that you get jealous of. Mm -hmm. So it works the other way. If I want it, you don't have to do it. But if I say, oh, I don't mind, then you can. So that means he has to run it by you before rendering such... 100%. That is the first rule of marriage. Like, 
communication, the first rule of communication. Mm. Like you want anything, I can anything I want to do before I have to come on this show. As much as I was really excited when you invited me, I had to run it through my spouse. I didn't, and you know, I, and I, I wouldn't want to say no, don't go. Mm. I know his answer would be hundred percent a yes, mm. but I don't take that for granted. I have mm. to run it by him. Good, good, good. I like that. I hope you guys are learning. <laughs> yeah, and it's not like I'm taking permission or you know, it's just a way to make people. You know, that's just the right way to do things. Yeah, to make that's him feel respected. Respected, yes. Mm-hmm. That's where we go, and I think that's the way things should be. Could be. Oh, Moya invited me to be on a show. I'm excited about it. My husband would say, "Yeah, it's salesperson. Stop selling to me." <laughs> yeah, Moya wants you to be there. You can be there. I'm never going to tell you not to go. So why are you trying to give me the advantages? Yeah. The I mean, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a sales professional by nature, so I, I sell everything, even in my house, yes. I sell. Good, good. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Alao, for allowing your wife to join us on Monix. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next question, uh, which you have already answered, but I just want you to, you know, um, just say one or two sentences about it. So how do you think um, asking exes for favors will affect one's marriage? It's really not good. Mm. It's going to bruise your husband's ego. It's going to bruise your wife's ego. It's, um, women don't really, yeah, we all have, you all human beings have the id and ego, but the men's own are always more, but the women, you know, we have this pride, like, let us keep our things to ourselves. Like, I don't want your ex to know that we're not doing that good. Mm. So I don't want you to bring her into it. You know, keep, okay. try to, try to, egg. yeah, you can be there, like, I know, Oh, hi, how are you doing? How is family? How is it? Or maybe on your birthday, you can say, Oh, happy birthday, Esther. I wish you, you know. But getting close to the point that they start knowing what is going on in your house, because before you can ask somebody for a favor, you'll be willing to at least let the person know what you want to do with their money. Yeah. So, quick one, quick one. So, on the birthday issue, uh, do you think your spouse should, um, do you think it's right for your spouse to wish? is excess um a happy birthday on their birthdays yes right. a happy birthday whatsoever name will do but when he's going to write an episode on the person's page and i mean it's uncalled like i get jealous the mm. happy birthday sweetie no this person is no longer your sweetie i'm the only sugar in your tea right now <laughs> Son, so yeah much. i think i'm like people use that word you know yeah, I use it a lot too, but I know some certain people I don't use it for. Mm. I have boundaries. I know certain people that I know that it may mean one thing or the other to them, then I would rather not use it. Mm. So mm. I'm wishing them happy birthday, I mean, it's not a bad idea. Mm. Like mm. I said, I'm big on human relations. It don't matter. Your enemy, you also wish your enemy happy birthday. So why not? Yes. The Bible says, be at peace with your enemies. <laughs> Pray for them. Yeah. Even so why is somebody that you've been involved with in the past? But you know, when it goes from more than happy birthday to, I, I want to hear, I want to know how you're feeling. I want to know, how, hey, hello. And do, do you think um, sending those birthday wishes won't make uh, the ex on the other side feel like, oh, does it still like me? Uh, do you think if I that's why I said it just has to end at HBD if possible? <laughs> Don't even write it in full <laughs> because when you start saying happy birthday, honey, happy birthday, sweetheart, you are this, you are that, mm. you start sending signal. The person may be ringing the wrong message. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you want to, you know, apply wisdom boundaries. Right. Thank you. So the last question. So this says, can you ask your spouse to help your ex if you find your ex in a poor condition? There again. Like, is that the only place you think help can come from? No, you are the one asking for your spouse to help your ex. Okay. Your spouse to help your ex. Yes. If you find him, maybe you see him on the streets. He's not homeless. He doesn't have anything. 
and you just feel sorry, you feel sorry for him. So can you ask your spouse to help? That's a thick one to end with. Mm -hmm. Mm. And then you are big on human relations. So for for humanity's sake, mm. for humanity's sake, I'll talk to my husband about it. I make him feel the way I make him understand the way I feel about it. Like even if I'm not, I didn't end up marrying this person, or I'm no longer married to this person, you know. But I just feel the need to help, even if you know it has to. Like, run it by your spouse. If they still say no, 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 then it should remain at no. Because I'll tell you one thing, God only looks at, God looks at our intentions. Mm -hmm. God knows that in your heart of heart, you would love to help. But there's a situation and what matters more to you is your marriage, is your relationship with your spouse, so you don't want to mess with that. So there are so many good things we want to do and our spouse doesn't believe in and they say no. Mm -hmm. I learned early enough in life to pause on, put a pause on that good thing because every good thing will always come. It never goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for the sake of the peace of your marriage, if your husband says no, then don't do it. Yeah. But if you are able to convince him, you're able to sell to him, like I always sell everything to my <laughs> husband. Yeah. yeah, I do presentation. No. <laughs> when, 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 <laughs> when you're with a smart guy, you know, <laughs> you know how to deal with him. Right. Like, I, I, I do presentation. I write down my bullet points because it's going to ask you. So why? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you always win. <laughs> ah, I win. He always tell me, this your mouth is too sweet. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, I'm a saleswoman. Yeah. Thank you so much, Esther. We have now come to the end of our question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so I'm much. Glad to be on your show. Thank you so I'm much. I'm so glad to have you here. So thank you so much. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so guys, that's it for today. You've listened to my guest. She has said a lot of things. One of the key things that I picked from her today is that we have to be emotionally intelligent. So answering questions posed by a spouse, you know, about your ex or your past relationships, you need to apply emotional intelligence in answering those questions. So, um, like I always say in all your relationships, your committed relationships and your marriage, always find a middle ground, discuss with your partner, open that line of communication and always ask questions, ask for clarification so that you can have a happy home and a happy marriage. Bye guys. So we'll see you again. Take care.